This is the Monterey Bay Knives Turbo, a collaboration with Peter Carey, a legend in the custom tactical knife, uh, folding knife world. Uh, Peter Carey, very, very nice guy. I uh, had him on the podcast and we had a great conversation. It was a real honor for me to talk to him about basically the birth of this whole format. He was there at the time, like a, a lot of the other guys we've talked to here, but um, it was interesting to get his take. I've always admired his tactical uh, designs. They are both beautiful and you can see how practical uh, they would be if you needed them for that tactical purpose. But man, do they get fancy in his, uh, in his custom work. His custom work is incredible. You need to look, you need to follow him on Instagram or, or look him up and look at some of the stuff he's done uh, in, during his career, which has been about 25 years or 30 years, something like that. So this Turbo is the latest and it's a uh, collaboration with Monterey Bay Knives. Sanford Owen, Ray Laconico own Monterey Bay Knives. And uh, Ray Laconico designs a, a good number of their knives, which are just, I mean, just outstanding. I've, this is the third Monterey Bay knives I've had in hand. I know I'm always late to the party. Yes, Bob, we all know they're outstanding. But I'm just excited because thanks to Lefty EDC uh, I've, and, and uh, Jake from Bearded Gear, I've had a chance to check these out recently, and I'm just really impressed. Um, so they're based in California. These knives are produced in China. And I will be 100% honest, I can't remember if they're all done in the same place. Uh, they feel like Riots to me. Uh, I don't think I asked Sanford when we were talking, and I don't think he mentioned it. I think it was a don't ask, don't tell kind of situation. But uh, it feels like Riot quality, I do must say that. And, uh, well, whatever. It's neither here nor there. If they wanted you to know, they'd let you know. It doesn't matter. The quality and the design and the collaborations speak for themselves. So like I said, this is from Peter Carey. A lot of their other knives are from co-owner Ray Laconico in terms of designs. And then uh, Monterey Bay Knives collaborates with other designers. Uh, uh, we had, uh, I showed off the sprocket the other day from Jerry McGinnis. Uh, and uh, Peter Carey did a different, another collaboration with them. Um, they've done, they've done some really uh, they've had some impressive collaborations because Peter Carey and Jerry McGinnis, for instance, in particular, actually, are very, their, their work is beyond reach for most, you know, mortals, their custom work. So to be able to put an, out a knife like this with such incredible fit and finish and, uh, you know, so true to the Carey sort of aesthetic that I can afford is really a great service. So I love when companies do that. I love this whole collaboration uh, thing. All right, so this is three and a half inches M390. That's flat ground, that's saber ground blade, and a very nice point with that swedge. I l like the look of this uh, blade. I can't decide if it's a bayonet or or what, but it's just got a really... Mm. And, and like the Rubicon, uh, his collaboration with Spyderco, and he had another one, I can't remember what it was called, a bigger one, uh, The from the plunge to where it meets the swedge, the grind has an upward, slightly upward angle. Um, to me, aesthetically, it's very pleasing. Uh, I'm not sure if that means it's thicker back here. It kind of feels even, I gotta say. But um, I'm not sure if that serves any other purpose than to look cool. Here you have a finger choil, not the most generous of finger choils. For me, it works. I have kind of slender fingers, but if you have big meat hooks, that might be, uh, you might want to widen that out just a touch. So really, really excellent flipper tab because it doesn't protrude too high on this side uh, and it's jimped and it gives you a great spot to just push down. And now that I'm doing this video and I'm looking closely, I can see there's dirt and grime in those gyms, which is gross. Uh, <laughs> this knife came to me. Uh, it's been in a number of other hands, all trusted hands and all great people, no doubt, but uh, uh, left some muck in the jimping, so I'm going to have to clean that out after this. I do believe I'm going to buy this knife and make this one mine. Um, I, re I really like it. I really like it. Plus, there's a sentimental value to it. I talked to Peter Carey on the show. I also talked to Sanford Owen on the show. 
And so this would represent, I have a lot of knives in my collection that represent uh, interviews I've done. And this would knock out two birds with one stone in a very classy and sharp way. Uh, titanium handle, all beautifully contoured and smooth. It feels so nice in hand. Uh, these sort of gentle curves in this uh, uh, little area for a lock bar access all just comes together and melts into your hand, really melts into your hand. Really nice backspacer. I like that waved scalloped pattern. A sort of signature sculpted titanium clip signature to Peter Carey that with the little holes in it and that shape. This is a very grippy pocket clip. I uh, and I, that's not to say that the tension is too much. I'm thinking this angle on the inside is a little sharp. If uh, you know, if I'm going to pick nits, I'd knock it down a little bit this way so it slides out of the pocket without grabbing the seam of the pocket and pulling your pants up a little bit, which this does, but that will probably loosen up with time too. Uh, very nice. I don't mean to like anything else has to loosen up on this because it is. This is one of those knives that's fun to just fidget with like that. So nice looking clip, well executed. I would just, uh, I would, I would change the angle of that ramp just a little bit if this were... <laughs> If I were Monterey Bay knives, uh, nice jumping on top. This actually works. It's nice and shallow and nicely spaced. This is, it looks like the kind of jimping you have on something that's, uh, do I have anything here? I don't have anything here, but it looks like hinderer, like it should be hinderer jimping, like they started it and then stopped, you know, like it looks like you could, you could go deeper with that, but no need. It's nice and grippy at that shallow um, depth and those distances between. M390 blade steel, nicely centered, you know, all that. All right, let me show this uh, with a couple of other knives. Uh, and, you know, I don't have too many flippers, and I don't have too many titanium flippers. Over the last couple of years, I've kind of found myself selling those off and getting more thumb study knives. Uh, but this, uh, let's see, one, two, three and a half, yeah. But this knife has sort of uh, captured my captured my attention. Let me show it with a couple of others. Here it is with a paramilitary two for size. And here it is with a, an RSK Mark I. That's a, about a three inch blade. So kind of, uh, you know, larger than a medium. You know, it's about a mid-sized tactical folder, I guess I would say. And now I'm going to show it off with a couple of my favorite type. Well, here, here it is with a Sebenza, kind of as also a sort of size comparison. So right around the same neighborhood, though it's a little little, uh, little longer on both ends. This, by the way, has a stellar handle to blade ratio. Has to do with this curve, I think, and also the blade shape and the handle shape and all that, but uh, this has a really nice blade to handle ratio. So another knife that I have, or, or one knife that I have that is a titanium liner lock that I love is the Tactile Knives Rockwall. Same thing, you get that. This is a case where having a titanium liner lock is even better than on a larger knife because small titanium liner locks, I tend to always have trouble with because I'm pushing down, especially if they're slender in this dimension. Because I always tend to press down on the lock bar with my fingers and then you have to make weird special accommodations, um, but not so with a liner lock. So there it is with the rock wall. Um, here's an oddball. Here it is with a Kaiser. Why am I showing it with this? This is the inversion. Uh, just because it's got a flipper and it's all titanium and I don't have too many all titanium flippers. So I want to show it with this. See the flipper tab there? Also a sort of discrete flipper tab. All right. The ones that are a little more salient though, I believe are right here. Here's a Wii made, uh, off grid scorpion very nicely made knife a little bit bigger straight on four inches here it is with the russian crystal aurora designed by ivan braganetz uh, i don't know close to my favorite uh, titanium flipper in my collection currently love that knife 
and uh, maybe the one that beats it out is the Riyadh K2. It even sounds authoritative, the K2. So, not a huge knife, not a small knife, just sort of a, a Midland size. One more I want to show it off with, uh, a knife that, that is in the same realm in terms of smoothness. The, uh, oh, that was my stomach. I wonder if the mic just picked it up. Uh, here it is with the Synapse from Vero Designs. Vero Engineering, sorry. I knew that was wrong when I was saying it. There it is. All, all great knives, but this knife is the subject of the video and I really like it. I think it's sold out at this point, uh, but if you're familiar with Monterey Bay knives, they do different runs, so this will come back. Uh, I know it's done very well and they also have it in a carbon fiber and a couple of other, uh, and blacked out and that kind of thing. So you will have some um, options and I know they're gonna bring this back because that's just how they do it. So uh, there it is, the Peter Carey Design Monterey Bay Knives Turbo.